If your home blood pressure reading is different from the doctor's office, from one monitor to the next, or from one minute to the next, then you may wonder about accuracy. But how we sit, the tightness of our cuff, our lifestyle patterns, stress, and even distractions during the measurement can all affect the result. So what's our first tip? Get the right size cuff. Most errors are from having the wrong size cuff. If the cuff is too small, it can add between two to 10 points. Most cuffs will list the size range. Measure around your arm with a tape measure to make sure you have the right cuff size. The second tip is to wear your cuff properly. I know it sounds obvious, but when watching patients take their measurements, we find a lot of common mistakes. One common issue is that the cuff is placed on top of your clothing. This can cause your reading to appear 10 to 50 points higher. So roll up your sleeve or take off your jacket. Another mistake we see a lot is that the cuff is too close to the elbow, too tight or too loose. So your cuff should fit around a half inch above your elbow and snugly so that two fingers can be wiggled underneath it, but not too much. Now, the third tip is to not use an old blood pressure monitor. This is a common recommendation across the entire blood pressure monitor industry. Your blood pressure monitor is calibrated out of the box and most can't be recalibrated. Every time you bump it around or take a reading, that calibration accuracy declines. The industry standard is to replace it if it's over two years old. Besides the cuff and the BP monitor, what other factors would cause high blood pressure results? Well, here are a few other factors. Stress before or during the measurement can raise your cortisol levels and cause a rise in blood pressure. Also, salty foods might cause high readings for a few days after you've eaten them. A full bladder can add up to 10 to 15 points, so use the restroom before measuring. Also, talking during the measurement might also raise blood pressure by 10 to 15 points. Being cold raises body activity and also blood pressure. And blood pressure may also be temporarily higher after you've exercised. The last and final thing is alcohol. Alcohol, caffeine, and tobacco, actually. They'll all cause a higher than normal blood pressure reading. So consider these before and while measuring. Otherwise, your blood pressure might be higher than normal. Well, we talked about the highs, but there's also things that can cause blood pressure to be artificially low. If you've eaten a large meal in the last hour or so, that typically drives the readings lower. Also, dehydration can cause lower blood pressure until you correct it. So if you've just come from the sauna, hot tub, or jacuzzi, or if you've been sweating a lot, your blood pressure might be low, so hydrate yourself. When and how should you check your blood pressure for a perfect reading? Well, the ideal thing is to take your blood pressure in the morning and also in the evening. So take your blood pressure in the morning before eating anything or 30 minutes or more after your last bite of food. Also make sure that you've gone to the restroom, you've rested for 30 minutes after exercise too. Nobody does this, but the American Heart Association recommends that you take three readings in a row and average them. More specifically, measure after resting in a chair for around five minutes with your feet flat on the floor and legs and arms uncrossed. Take your three readings with each reading spaced about one minute apart, and the reading that you use is actually the average of all three of those readings put together. If your reading still seems unusual, drink some water, eat some fresh fruits and vegetables, and recheck in about an hour. And lastly, if you're still wondering about the accuracy of your BP readings, try to do a side-by-side -side comparison with a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer at the doctor's office. Replace your monitor if it's over two years old, but definitely do not compare one home blood pressure monitor to another and don't use a wrist monitor if possible. 
I hope these videos help you to learn a little bit more about getting an accurate blood pressure reading. And as always, feel free to reach out to your care team if you've got any questions. I hope you like this video. Go ahead and scroll through our website or our Unified Care app for more information about chronic conditions, vitals monitoring, and general nutrition and wellness. See you again soon.